service of CNC Worldwide. CNC podcasts are a service of CNC Worldwide, brought to you by the Greece Chamber of Commerce, providing more than 800 member companies with business solutions since 1984. New York's Attorney General says telemarketers registered with the state raised more than $249 million in charitable donations in 2012, and they kept nearly two-thirds of it. Eric Schneiderman released his annual Pennies for Charity fundraising report Thursday. It shows an average of $0.62 out of every charitable dollar raised by telemarketers stays with the telemarketing companies to cover their fees and expenses. For 2012, that meant more than $154 million out of nearly $250 million raised. Only 38% on average goes to the cause being supported. The Attorney General also found 91 cases in which the marketing company made more than the amount that went to the charities. Schneiderman thinks the best way to respond to charitable donations by phone is to resist pressure to give on the spot and ask questions about how much of your money the charity gets and how it's going to be used. Rochester School District officials have launched their latest truancy blitz. Superintendent Bolgan Vargas and school officials from all levels found out across the city Thursday morning trying to find students who have long-term unexplained absences. If they find the student or some responsible person, they figure out what they can do to get that kid back in school. The medical examiner's office has confirmed the identities of the three people found shot to death Monday in an apartment on Chai Lai Avenue. As family members previously said, the victims are cousins, Jacqueline Simmons and Jermalia Simmons of Rochester, both young mothers in their 20s, and their friend Michael Nelson. Family and friends held vigil outside the building on 809 Chai Lai Avenue across from School 44 Wednesday night calling for answers. Police have not released any information about their investigation so far. Residents of the 19th Ward had those homicides on their mind at a community meeting with Rochester police officials that took place Wednesday night. Again, police weren't able to provide them with any update on the investigation. State Transportation Department officials say steel repair is underway on the Arundaquite Bay Bridge. Inspectors found during last year's construction that support beams beneath the bridge floor had deteriorated. Last week, they began attaching steel cover plates to reinforce the beams and other steel that showed signs of wear. The Department of Transportation says the bridge is safe for all traffic, but the outer lanes have been closed since October. They're due to reopen by the end of March. United States Senator Charles Schumer says an agreement between the railroad industry and the federal government on safety standards for shipping oil by rail is not good enough. The New York Democrat says his problem with the agreement is that it leaves a trouble-prone type of tank car in service. DOT 111-type tank cars have proven to have little resistance to being torn apart in a crash, dumping their flammable cargoes. Schumer says they were involved in the Lac Megantic explosion last year in Canada. Schumer wants the 111 type cars scrapped and speeds reduced through urban areas on trains that carry crude oil. Hundreds of tank cars carrying crude from western wells to eastern refineries pass through Rochester and across New York State on the CSX rail line on a daily basis. Homes in Brighton, Penfield and Farmington were featured on Wednesday night's House Hunters program on HGTV, the Home and Garden Network. The episode was shot last summer. It followed a couple looking to buy their first home in the Rochester area. After looking in all three communities, they settled on a place in Farmington, both for price and because they thought it was the best place to raise a family. A Geneva woman has been charged with falsifying business records after failing to report an accident to a patient under her care. The Ontario County Sheriff's Office says Dawn Fishback was working as a nurse at a private home when she saw her patient fall off a bed. That patient suffers from brittle bone disease, a genetic condition which causes his bones to fracture easily. The fall caused him a broken leg, a fractured pelvis, and other injuries. The complaint charges that medical care was delayed more than 16 hours because Fishback didn't bother to make either a written or verbal report about what happened. State police in Batavia say they have arrested two men from Attica on grand larceny charges for digging up underground cables across three different towns. Investigators say Wayne Pierce and Eugene Redding, both 72 years old, came up with the idea of asking property owners for permission to dig up cables beneath their land. Then they took it to scrap yards. They ended up splitting $100,000. Trouble was the cables didn't belong to those landowners, but to AT&T phone and data networks. When they began to report the damage, state police went looking and caught up with the pair. AT&T is working with investigators on further cable losses. 
Reese Police named Officer Jeff Munson Officer of the Year at its annual awards ceremony Wednesday night. Officer Munson's a crime scene technician. The department also gave its 2013 Civilian Employee of the Year award to Mary Jo Cordaro. The next news podcast is whenever you click on one of our pages and catch one. We post updates through the day. I'm Bud Lowell, CNC News.